guys, eh? You got him? Okay, read him. Far from being seen as an item of prestige that confers status on its owner, it is an item torn from a living animal in agony. It is a badge of shame and the trade must end. Let us fight illegal trade at all levels and let us work together towards ensuring a sustainable ecosystem for our continent. As elephants roam across much of Africa, these majestic animals are under severe threat from poaching, habitat loss, and human-wildlife conflict. In the early 20th century, there were between 3 to 5 million African elephants. Now, there are only an estimated 400,000 remaining, and in Ethiopia, the staggering number is estimated to be less than 1,900. That number is rapidly dropping. So how did Ethiopia get here? Let's first turn back the hands of time to the history of elephants in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is home to the African bush elephant, also known as Luxodonta. During the 19th century, hunting was popular among rulers and visiting hunters, like Prince Rospali, an Italian explorer, who was killed by an elephant in the Lake Abaye area of Ethiopia. In the 1900s, overhunting for ivory trade had a negative impact on Ethiopia's elephants. More than 60 tons of ivory passed through Djibouti in the year 1910. As elephants became scarce, the trade volume plummeted, pushing Emperor Malik II to place a ban on elephant hunting. Elephant hunting was only allowed by his permission. In the 1960s, Emperor Haile Selassie I along with UNESCO, identify potential protected areas. The significant status of Ethiopia's elephants was evident as seen as images on the nation's currency and postage stamps. In the 1970s and 80s, Ethiopia was immersed in civil war during the Dirk regime. Trophy hunting and poaching for ivory spun out of control, decimating the elephant population. Since the 1980s, Ethiopia has lost 90% of its elephants. Today, with the growing needs of the country and lack of awareness, Ethiopia is now in crisis to save what could be its last elephants. When I heard that Ethiopia was at risk of losing its elephants, I wanted to know more about this problem and the current issues behind it. I decided to travel to some of Ethiopia's most remote national parks where elephants are to be found, hoping to gain clarity and understanding. My first destination is Omo National Park, located 867 kilometers from Addis Ababa in the Southern Nations, Nationalities and Peoples region of Ethiopia. Established in 1968, Omo National Park is home to 369 wildlife species. The park is one of the least developed areas of the country stretching 457,400 hectares. The habitat is open savanna and a mixed woodland. The elephant population size is estimated to be a little over 400, with movement to Mongo National Park and southwest into the Limi Triangle with South Sudan and Kenya. My quest to understand the elephant crisis soon became an adventure as I explored the park's enormous rich green savanna for elephants. So it's only so far that the car can take us. Uh, so we're now going by foot. I was told by the park scout that the elephants usually come out in the morning and in the late afternoon, which is around 4 or 5 p.m. 
So we're now starting our journey to see if we can find and be lucky to find an elephant. Of course, the elephants have their own schedule. They're not on a precise schedule, but if we're lucky, we'll find one. I think we are getting near. The key is to find where the elephants usually come together. And as the park ranger told me, this is the elephant footprint, which is uh, according to the appearance and how dry it is, it's about three to four days old, which means that we are getting close to where the elephants will be hanging around. We're getting close. We walked about five kilometers. We didn't have any luck. Also, the road or the path that we want to take, it's a little hard to get to because it was a heavy rain the other day, so the road is gonna be muddy. And if we don't head back in time, it will be late before we get to our vehicle. So we decided it's best just to head back to our car and try again tomorrow. It's 5.30 the next morning. We decided to leave early and hopefully we'll get a chance to find elephants today. Our morning didn't start smoothly. Just as we started out, we got a flat tire, but the postcard-like surroundings made up for the brief setback. Yeah, we have Tilant Mata with a Mishit Astrasat with the Taisat Akababi, Zuhoni Alphabet Addis Dukano. We continue searching for elephants, but our search was starting to look bleak. This remote park is challenged with major issues, such as ethnic conflicts, illegal influx of firearms from South Sudan, and illegal killing of wildlife. As we made our way past thorny bushes, we came across a carcass of an elephant that was killed by illegal poachers. Poaching for ivory is the most severe threat facing Ethiopia's elephant population. In the last five years, it's estimated that over 100 elephants were killed for their tusk. Illegal wildlife trade is estimated to be worth over 23 billion US dollars per year and has drastically reduced the elephant population around Africa. After hours of searching and not seeing any elephants, we decided it was time to head back to the campsite. Among illegal poaching, the park also faces challenges of large-scale agricultural expansion, like a sugar factory that has started constructing a canal for a sugarcane plantation, 
Some believe that such infrastructure can have a negative impact on the animal's natural behavior and habitat. There is an expansion of uh, uh, agriculture, mainly for uh, sugar cane development, and then there is a huge uh, irrigation canal. Uh, all, all, all these have uh, potential impact on uh, particularly on elephant because uh, elephant uh, demands huge, huge place, huge land to be able to survive. We are carefully dealing with uh, sugar corporation uh, to minimize uh, the pressure. So far, uh, uh, our relationship is going well and uh, I hope uh, uh, we collaborate and then we integrate our effort and then minimize um, the pressure and then we hope there is no uh, any longer expansion uh, in the future. In Ethiopia, the Zuhonus Kutar Makanas, Kutar Ant, Higot Adan, Higot Edwin Sat, Zuhural, in Ethiopia. Higot Adan, who lived in the middle of the world, lived in the world. One moment, we used to allow Saratachin, Mashashar, Ranger Roach Smart Loan, we got it. Online Loan, we got it. Outpost Touch, who let the child out almost. Sabat Cement Loan, we got it. Aun ini asyik kata ter, yaitu itu demi sekarang tu, waktu malam malam ni jam marut, ikat telal, patrol. Day tu dia aktiviti pun dah zaka kat telal, he go touch leh gay kerabu, zaka babi alu, ye dua orang satu dah nana tak cukat tetap baka, ye hidup ye dua orang satu curu halam malam si cilek, agar aku sih mesti luar negeri kapal. Dalam sali Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Benai, KG label lain tu, sila wild life ni marut. Kaji jilid belai. Ia anda nun hidup insisat. Fikir mahasiswa cew gana kata jilid belai. Inya gakku, baca fitanya temur tibet. Wei turism setempat nun sudah dulu insisat mentaka tu biasa. Kan dengan sekarang sudah tanya kalau bumi maru batas tu ko. Ia unik cinta paragraf negar kalau nubas tegar sudah dulu insisat tu ko. Mangkisam tu kurata la terang. Our next destination is Mago National Park, located 800 kilometers from Addis Ababa in the Southern Nations, Nationalities, and Peoples region of Ethiopia. Established in 1971, Mango National Park has around 209 wildlife species. Next to Omo National Park, both parks share similar wildlife and nature. Mango National Park is also known for its rich cultural diversity and nomadic lifestyles. With scenic attractions, the park spans 1,942 kilometers. The habitat is open savanna and riverine forest. The elephant population size is estimated to be around 80, with movement to Omo National Park, where the two parks directly connect. Like neighboring Omo National Park, Mango National Park is threatened with influx of illegal firearms, ivory smuggling, ethnic conflicts, and illegal killing of wildlife. Hunting for bushmeat for tribal cultural practices like marriages and social status has also presented a challenge for the park. The ethnic conflicts also make it very difficult for the park to conduct law enforcement operations and conservation efforts. After hours of trekking through the thick savanna, no elephants in sight. I'm told that the elephants are becoming scarce and forced away because of illegal poaching, sounds of gunfire, human-elephant conflicts, and overgrazing by livestock. The commercial agriculture in Omo National Park and neighboring areas has also resulted in a loss of connectivity among the two parks, affecting the natural habitat and movement of wildlife, especially the elephants. Over the past 40 years, the elephant population of Mago National Park has decreased by more than 52%. As I began my journey to the next destination, I started thinking to myself, 
Maybe it was not my luck in finding elephants in the two parks, but what if this became the reality? That one day, we could never see elephants in Ethiopia again. We arrived at our next destination, Chapera Chuchura, located 460 kilometers from Addis Ababa in the southern nations, nationalities, and people's region of Ethiopia. Established in 2006, Chapera Chachara Park has 229 wildlife species. Blessed with lush green rolling plains and hilly mountains, the park stretches across 1,190 kilometers. The habitat is of dense woodlands and riverine forests, which provides a good habitat for elephants. The elephant population size is estimated to be around 430. The elephants mainly use the northern northwest of the park but also move through the Central River area and to the eastern and southern areas of the park. The park faces challenges of increased human population with dependency on natural resources, no clear park boundary, no buffer zone, and human-elephant conflicts. On the day of our arrival, we were informed of a recent destruction caused by elephants in a nearby village. We went along with park authorities to look at the aftermath. This was a maize crop. I was told that last night around five elephants came in and basically destroyed the majority of the crop. It's very difficult because when you talk to the farmer, they're trying to survive by selling the maize for income and on the other side you have the elephants who are also trying to survive. It is truly a human elephant conflict. Due to the increasing human elephant conflicts, the local administration offered to relocate villagers further away from the elephant's paths. Some villagers accepted the offer, and the ones who remain behind are now paying their price of the constant battle of survival between humans and elephants. To keep elephants away from crops, the park recently installed a chili pepper fence. Some of the local chili peppers were found not to be effective. The fence stretches 15 kilometers, but only five kilometers is covered with chili oil due to lack of resources and harvesting the right effective chili peppers. As a park, we have achieved a huge success in conserving elephant. We have a special task force that follows the elephant everywhere where the elephant goes. Just before five or six years, there was poaching here, and it's not small amount. We have been losing more than 12 elephants each year because of poachers. Those are illegal. And uh, to reverse this problem, we established a special task force that just follows the elephant footprint and spent even the night there. Then after uh, we implement such a uh, guarding uh, mechanism, the poaching becomes decreased and finally now we achieved zero level poaching. The next day, a community meeting was organized between park authorities and farmers. Their problem with elephants has reached its boiling point. The farmers expressed their frustration of crop destructions caused by elephants. As their crops are destroyed, they cannot earn an income, support their families, or send their children to school. Crop destructions by elephants is increasing, and the farmers feel they don't receive help soon, their attitude to protecting elephants will change. The following morning, we started elephant tracking through the park's lush green jungle.
On our way searching for elephants, we came across a herd of hippopotamus. As we were getting closer to the elephant's habitat, every step we took, we took with caution. The elephants here, I'm told, are very aggressive towards humans. There are recent cases of villagers that were killed by elephants. One case was of a couple who were collecting wild honey in a forest. When they came across an elephant, the elephant charged, killing them instantly. If close enough, it takes less than a second for an elephant to charge, and the impact can be fatal. By nature, elephants are usually gentle unless under danger. So why were the elephants here so aggressive? I was told that four years ago, there was an influx of illegal elephant hunting in the park. According to research, an elephant can live more than 70 years. They have emotions just like humans. Through years of research, scientists have found that elephants are capable of complex thought and deep feeling. They even grieve for their dead. Perhaps the memories of their loved ones being hunted and killed, as well as the current deep in human elephant conflicts, has caused their aggression and mistrust towards the humans here. With all the precautions in mind, we continue trekking through the deep, dense forest. We finally found the elephants. We we're standing more than 400 meters away for our safety, but to actually see them, it's amazing. Next destination is Babele Elephant Sanctuary, located 557 kilometers from Addis Ababa in the Ethiopian, Somali, and Oromia region of Ethiopia. Established in 1970, Babele Elephant Sanctuary is the only elephant sanctuary in Ethiopia and home to 22 wildlife species. It is the largest conservation area of the country spanning 6,982 kilometers. The habitat is thick woodlands in hilly areas and open valleys. The elephant population size is estimated to be 250. Elephants here are said to be the last of the Somali elephants after their extermination in northern Somalia in the 1920s. Before the establishment of a ballet elephant sanctuary, the vast area was a game hunting site. As the elephant's population decreased, concerns grew. In 1970, Emperor Haile Selassie I issued an order designating the area as an elephant sanctuary. Today, some of the problems facing the sanctuary are illegal settlement, livestock grazing, and agriculture expansion. At Babele Elephant Sanctuary, it was expected to see elephants, as it is the only elephant sanctuary in the country. What was not expected was seeing the large illegal settlements inside the sanctuary. As I am walking through the sanctuary with you. I can't help but notice to see so many people living and farming here. How does that, in what ways does it affect the uh, sanctuary? Uh, the, it is, it is, it's effect. It's, it's, it's effect. Because if, if, if there is a farm, if there is, if there is a settlement, <laughs> elephant cannot survive. Because you know, elephants need free, need big area. Because this is a sanctuary. In, in sanctuary, this is a natural sanctuary. So it can affect, it, it can kill the, even, even the whole system of the sanctuary because of settlement. Be, because of, if people are here, they, they have a domestic animal, 
They have a land for 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 farm. Look, look at this 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 they are village. They also sell charcoal. So it 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 affects. Ethnic conflicts are also tense here, especially along the border of Ethiopia and Somalia. With lack of resources, park scouts and the local militia patrol the area and border every day. Educating the communities on the importance of protecting wildlife is crucial to the sanctuary's conservation efforts. <laughs> Tukamu akan kami isni mu berbana, arba arba kofamuti, jeldis, warabes, takrim, bebenin sun, bosana, harap bi umi, odu mahori kamu, odu marai kamu, odu ma odu ma galak kamu, ajefne bebenin sun, nyana muti, kunilen, ya kakak teh awas nih kenya bekeh, eh, isara, if if balalu kaba. Another major problem for Babele Elephant Sanctuary is illegal killing of elephants for ivory. Over the past eight years, more than 40 elephants were brutally slaughtered for their tusk. The sanctuary has lost 25% of its elephant population. Tell us about the challenges that you face regarding poaching and illegal ivory trade. Yeah, yeah, okay. We have a, a big challenge. Yeah, of, of, about ivory, because yeah, elephants here in Babylon killed for two k for two cases, one human wildlife conflict, the other one is for ivory trade. The uh, uh, the the ivory will transporting from here to Addis Ababa to Bole International. The the other one is just take from here to Somalia and to Djibouti directly to China, because China is the main importer of ivory. There are, there are people who come from Somalia or from Djibouti because we are near, near of the, the near of Djibouti and Somalia. We are neighbor. So they come from there and uh, pay for the, for, for the local community some money and people just kill elephants. Our final destination is Kaftusharao National Park, located 1,015 kilometers from Addis Ababa in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. Established in 2007, Kaftusharao National Park is one of Ethiopia's newest parks and has around 205 wildlife species. Bordered with Eritrea and the Takase River, Kaftusharao has become one of the country's new elephant destinations. The park stretches over an area of 2,176 kilometers. The habitat is of acacia woodlands, hilly areas, and open valleys. The elephant population size is estimated to be around 300, with movement to Gashbarka in Eritrea. Some of the challenges that the park is threatened with is habitat loss and corridor obstruction from small-scale irrigation schemes, settlement, and agriculture. We arrived during this dry season, and the chance of seeing elephants would be slim, but we ventured out anyway. This is dry season, and usually the elephants cross over the border to Eritrea for grazing, but we're lucky. We saw two, and I was told that they're male, and they're searching for food, which means that if they find plenty enough food, they will gather their herd and come here for grazing as well. Among the challenges the park faces is illegal gold mining. The miners use gold detecting devices to detect if gold is underground. For better detection, 
the illegal gold miners set fire to the park's grasslands. As we were on the road, we encountered two men on a motorcycle. As they came closer to the park's truck, they quickly turned around and sped away. One man jumped off and ran towards the hills. It was apparent they were illegal gold miners. The whole event was caught on our drone. As the drone followed the suspect, more illegal gold miners were spotted, and they too began to flee. Apparently they were on their way to wash the gold that they have found in the ground of the park. And I guess we caught them when they were on their way to make their final process of uh, washing the gold and selling it on the uh, black market. Mm. And this is a gold piece. And basically what they do, they will come to the park grounds and dig and when they come across these gold pieces, they take it to a nearby river, wash the pieces, and then go and to sell it to the uh, black market. So this is one of the challenges that the park is facing, illegal gold mining. We came across one of the illegal gold mines, and by the looks of it, this is also where they work and also sleep. Um, you can also see some of their leftover materials um, and by the looks of it, it looks as though this is what they use to, to, to cook their meals as well. But you can see how deep and massive the gold mine is and it's quite a destruction to the park. Mining for gold has negative effects on the park, including soil erosion, loss of biodiversity and contamination of surface water, also formation of sinkholes. Wildlife have also fallen into these massive pits and died by being stranded. As we were filming, park scouts apprehended a young boy who was at the site. He admitted that he works at the illegal gold mine. A local survey conducted in 2012 revealed that more than 10,000 youth, both male and females, were working in illegal gold mining in the park. When the cameras were off, the park scouts gave the young boy a stern warning and released him because he was underage for prosecution. Illegal woodcutting for charcoal is another constant battle the park is faced with. I Deforestation leads to a direct loss of the park's wildlife habitat. The removal of trees and other types of vegetation reduces available food, shelter, and breeding habitat. Elephants are very rare in Ethiopia. Uh, because of what uh, uh, their habitat destruction, uh, you see, uh, uh, there is uh, an increase of population from one year to one year in Ethiopia. Uh, if uh, the politicians, the governments are uh, uh, aware about the wildlife conservation and uh, aware about the elephants, just the government allocate budget, enough budget for, for conservation. So uh, it, it, is, it is very important. For, 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 for their habitat uh, conservation and for uh, uh, themselves. After seeing the challenges on the ground, 
I wanted to know the position of policymakers. Are policymakers aware of the issues facing the parks, or especially the endangered elephants? I can say yes, no, because some of them they know, uh, but still we have huge uh, awareness gap even among us, the decision makers, policy makers. We have developed the National Elephant Action Plan, uh, uh, which is um, under implementation, uh, especially through GEF6 uh, project. We have uh, uh, hope and then we are optimistic that uh, the, poli the, the gap from the awareness of policy makers and then decision makers improve in the future and then we get more resource and then try to rehabilitate uh, the, our elephant population in the future. In commitment to saving the country's elephants, Ethiopia took actions in signing and endorsing international conservation frameworks and global organizational memberships. Ethiopia also became a founding member of the Elephant Protection Initiative, an African-led response to the elephant crisis. In 2015, the government of Ethiopia, through Ethiopian Wildlife Conservation Authority, also known as Yuka, implemented the Ethiopian Elephant Action Plan with the aim of protecting Ethiopia's elephants and to end illegal ivory trade. To crack down on illegal poaching and wildlife trafficking, the Ethiopian government, through Yuka, is working to raise awareness, improve enforcement of Ethiopia's wildlife laws, and strengthen collaboration both domestically and internationally. Through monitoring of entry and exit points and intelligence gathering, Ethiopia over the past eight years has arrested and prosecuted more than 800 people for illegal wildlife trafficking. The Ethiopian government also took strong measures in shutting down the open ivory market in Addis Ababa. In 2015, Ethiopia burned six tons of confiscated stockpile of ivory, sending a strong message to poachers. Elephants in Ethiopia play a critical role in the biodiversity of its own habitat and draws admirers from all over the world. Protected wildlife areas for elephants in Ethiopia are not only good for the country's biodiversity, but can also drive long-term economic growth, revenues, and jobs. One of the essential nature and wildlife conservation strategy is educating the villagers and children living around the protective areas on the importance of protecting the elephants and wildlife species and the value that it brings to their communities and the country. We have missed already a rhino, black rhino, uh, from Omo Valley, uh, as long as the information we have. Because for the last 30 and so, no one has spotted black rhino in Omo Valley. And, uh, if, we, if the same thing going to happen to Elephant, that's really a big shame and then a big disappointment uh, for Ethiopia and then for the Ethiopian people. And then the girl said, Yechamara bin, Yechamara bin, Yechamara bin, Yona de Gasser Sebacho, Aboracho, we much more deceiving. If we lose elephant here in, in Ethiopia, it is big, sad unhappiness. My children should see Sushi the elephant. I've seen many times. So we are also working huh, to, to pass for the coming generation. We should struggle still. Uh, there is a chance to, to, to save, uh, but uh, integration and then collaboration effort is uh, really important. Mahatma Gandhi once said that the greatness of a nation can be judged by the way its animals are treated. As I looked beyond the horizon, I wondered, after years to come, what would be the story of Ethiopia's elephants? My hope is that the story would be how Ethiopia came together as a nation and saved its elephants from vanishing from this diverse and beautiful land.